our guy Steve Cohen and the New York Mets. So yes, I think some fans are gonna be like, you guys talk so much about, especially with Ken, the Cardinals, the Padres, and the Mets. No shit, these are some of the most disappointing seasons we've seen from teams in this status in a long time, Ken. And now we're approaching the trade deadline when all of these teams could be selling away players and could be the talk of the trade deadline. So yes, we're gonna go there and you're gonna write about them. So give us a little bit about what you recently covered, which has to do with the Mets high price talent. Yeah, we know the guys that are gonna be a free agent soon, like Robertson and Canna, but I'm thinking about Max and JV. How complicated, is it too complicated to be able to pull off a deal with one of those two guys? First of all, Scott, thank you for saying that. And I hear it all the time from people. All you do is write about the Mets. Really? The most expensive team in history. Perhaps the biggest flop of all time. Guess what? They're going to get written about. They're going to get written about a lot. The Padres, not far behind them in terms of payroll. The Cardinals, it's simply shocking what has happened to them. We write about things that are relevant to readers and viewers, and that's the way it goes. And I know if you're a fan of the team, you might not like it. Well, too bad. I'm not here to be your cheerleader and your pom-pom squad. Tell him, right. Kenny. Now, that said, <laughs> that, was that good. said, yeah. JV and Scherzer, they're complicated. Same reason as Goldschmidt and Arenado for starters, in that they have full no trade clauses. So the way I put it in print today was they not only can control the process, they can disrupt the process. That said, if you can convince one of them to go, they also have complicated contracts. Scherzer has an opt-out for next year. If he opts in, it's $43.33 million. Verlander has a conditional player option for 2025. That's for $35 million. It kicks in if he pitches next year 140 innings. So not only is there a lot of money on the books this year, about $14 million each when the deadline hits, there's money in the future, potentially. That would have to be accounted for in any trade discussion. Now, the one thing that gives the Mets a huge advantage is Steve Cohen's wallet. He can pay down these salaries, include cash in the deals to effectively buy prospects. So, for instance, let's say you trade Scherzer and you send $10 million of the $14 million he is due this year to the team. You're telling that team, we'll give you that money, but you're going to give us some better talent than you might have otherwise. It all works in that sense. If you take away the following years, which you'd have to account for in some way as well, some kinds of conditions in the trade. Problem is, until Sunday, Max Scherzer hadn't pitched consistently well all season. Sunday he was great, kind of like the old Max. Verlander the same. They both have had injury issues this season. So if you're a team trading for them, sure, let Steve Cohen pay all the money, but how much are you still going to be willing to give? And how transformational would that be for the Mets, if at all? It wouldn't be. That was the point of what I wrote today, that the deadline will not be a panacea for them. Next year could be problematic as well for them because they've got basically the same group coming back only a year older, and they're one of the older teams in the major leagues already. While they've mixed in a few young players, they're still quite veteran. So it's a difficult spot that they're in, and that is the point of what I wrote. I started the column by relating a conversation I had with a fan on the field the other day. And the fan says to me, who wants our players, Ken? And he meant that in a way like, I know that people don't really want our players because of contracts, because of inconsistency, for a variety of reasons. And that's the spot they're in. And yes, I will say it again. This is the most expensive team in history and not by a little, by a lot in Major League Baseball. When they fail, the way they have failed, that is a huge monumental story and it's going to be covered and it's going to be covered exhaustively. Hey, Ken, on Saturday when we did the Mets-Dodgers game, uh, obviously we called the game the way we saw it. And to, to add to your point, I got crushed on Twitter because they're like, you didn't mention Senga's great game. You just bla blasted the Mets the whole time. I'm like, well, Senga, we mentioned 50 times about how well he pitched. <laughs> And second of all, they played like shit. So what are we supposed to sugarcoat it and say, man, the Mets dropping that pop-up was the best thing I've ever seen. I, I mean, I just don't get it. Like, what do you want? You want us to lie to you or do you want us to tell you what's happening? And you summed it up perfectly, Ken. We're not your pom-pom squad. We're going to tell you the truth. And you know what? If you're a fan, it sucks. Because when you're a fan of a team that sucks, it sucks. Now, I will say this. You say we're going to tell you the truth. It is our opinion and it might not be right. You might disagree with that opinion. That's fine. 
I have never a problem with a fan who says, Ken, I think you're wrong. I think the Mets' outlook is actually brighter than you're portraying it to be. That's all well and good. That's good baseball discussion. The only time I get my guard up a little bit and get a little ticked off is when people say, you shouldn't even be writing about that. Oh, really? I think I'll choose what I write about, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I could not agree <laughs> more. Fire exactly. me up. Amen. Fire me Let's up. Let's go. Let's go. We got, it's we the gotta, same with this show. Sorry, we, we're going to talk about Otani, Cardinals, Padres, Mets. It's Mets. damn trade season right now. That's we got what a, the people want. We got a feisty AJ and a feisty Ken on the show today. I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ken I makes love me it. Oh, and by the way, I'll have a notes column tomorrow with plenty of stuff on other teams. So you can there look forward go. to that. You heard it here first. Perfect. Yes. You heard it John Heyman can't beat you to that one, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, great to see you. We'll talk later. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ken. Appreciate it.